nice, but the world is not ready. Yeah, yeah. Be so nice, not ready. Yeah, yeah. But the world is not ready. Yeah. Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update, Sunday, November 11th, 11 p.m. Mountain Time, 2018. You're looking at the CoolWX.com daily record temps over the last 24 hours. Moments before I made the video, I loaded the data. You're going to see hundreds of record lows on the East Coast and the West Coast pop up before your very lives. The last 24 hours of it, to be specific. 140 record lows quickly dappling across the screen, showing you all of North America. Record highs were recorded in Florida, tying or within three degrees of daily records. My apologies. No record highs, only record lows being broken. Those are the dark blue with circles. I'm telling you what, it's unprecedented. And we've entered a new paradigm called the Grand Solar Minimum. Welcome to the effing awesome classroom. You've chosen wisely. It's boom time. Let's check out this deep bag as this to say. Fire, that would bring the total to 25 now between this fire and then the campfire raging up north as well. Uh, here in Malibu, we're in the southwest corner of the fire's footprint, and it seemed to choose houses at random. For instance, this property here, you can see the home is... Still in perfect shape. The property oh, they chose that. Really nice. Untouched. Nine million. But come on over here with me acre. just to the, the next property, and you can see uh, not everyone was as lucky. Obviously, there's some charring uh, through the bushes there, and then there are these oh, seaside God properties. God forbid, that right, charred look bushes. Right out onto the Pacific Ocean that are completely destroyed, like this one right here. That would have been a uh, an absolutely gorgeous home there, right out onto the Pacific, overlooking Zuma Beach, and it is completely and utterly destroyed. Uh, if you come down here, you know, officials were warning about these downed power lines, downed trees, and there's a perfect example, a tree that sort of burned out uh, and just managed to keel over. You can see. Downed power lines are an issue, so are D-bags reporting on Malibu houses being burned. No one in Malibu got hurt. The people that got hurt in the real cities, where the entire city of paradise is missing. Dozens are dead, and this guy wants to talk about some rich ass tarts up in Malibu. Oh, what a schmuck. All I can say is that guy should be fired. Death toll jumps in historic California wildfire as governor requests aid. We're talking the Camp Fire and the Woosley Fire. The death toll from wildfires ravaging both ends of California has ris risen to 29 as we speak after remains of several more people have been found Sunday. The so-called campfire leveled nearly the entire city of Paradise as we reported on 24 hours ago. They're just catching up. I don't understand it. Scorching thousands of homes and leaving businesses in ruin. More than 200 people are now missing after the wildfire decimated the town of 27,000. So this death toll is going to go up. The campfire, which began Thursday, destroyed 6,700 structures. The same number I reported on 24 hours ago. Apparently, they're keeping this on wraps. Almost all of them homes. It's considered the most dangerous fire ever. If they tell you to evacuate, get out or become toast. Chicago's inch of snow Friday was the earliest in three decades, and she knows it. An inch of snow fell Chicago area Friday morning, marking the earliest such snowfall in three decades. The last time snowfall measured at least an inch before November 9th was back in 1989 when global warming began. And now we've come full circle and they're totally fluxed. When nearly four inches of snow fell on October 19th, according to the National Weather Service back in 89, Al Gore was just getting ready to make his move. The one inch recorded at O'Hare International Airport was the 21st time since 1884 that an inch or more snow fell at Chicago before November 10th, the weather service said. And she could feel it. Can you deal with it? McHenry County hits its record for early snowfall, meteorologists say. This is also in the Chi-Town area. County faced an unusual snow and bitter temps over the weekend. Yeah, and it's not over. It's just beginning. We still have five weeks before winter. Did you hear that? Five weeks? It's not winter for five weeks. We did not have fall in North America anywhere 
Florida has been summer the whole time. The rest of the country has been in winter. Friday was the coldest November 9th ever recorded at SeaTac Airport. Temperatures around Puget Sound will dip into the did dip into the 30s Friday and did warm up on Saturday. But can you imagine the lowest temperature ever recorded in the Puget Sound after all of the sheep believed in Al? I just say, wow. <laughs> the sheep are getting a wake-up call. Teeth chattering, record-breaking wake-up call on the way. And this is for Mississippi. We're not subscribing, sorry. The sunshine peaked out from under the clouds just before sunset in the last few days. Danes have raised every place with blue skies. The next cold temperatures are forecast to get even colder over the next days in Mississippi. M-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. -S -S -I -P -P -I. Here are the forecast low temps for the next five days. Monday morning, negative 46. No, that's 46. <laughs> Just a dash. Tuesday, 36. Wednesday, 25 degrees in Mississippi. If the temperature drops to 25 degrees on Wednesday morning, it would shatter the record low of 27 set back in 1940 in Natchez, right across the river from Vidalia, where they make the onions. Yeah, they make them by putting seeds in the ground or sets and letting them plump in the delicious soil that makes them the most sought after and sweetest onions on the planet. On November 15th, the temperature dropped to 19 degrees in the same location. These are climate cycles. Have nothing to do with you and everything to do with the climate and its cyclic nature, which is forced in our solar system by our sun. Not by you, and not by the D-bags that are setting the policy that are taxing you for plant food. Now let's talk about the record cold coming Tuesday in the same area of Mississippi through Thursday. We're talking Natchez. First frost for the region is expected to be hard freeze on Wednesday, killing all of the crops in the ground. A passing cold front is expected to drop temperatures to near record lows early in the week, and we're going to be watching this because we have the data sets. And we give you the truth here at the effing awesome classroom. Look at this blabbermouth. Apparently he got his teeth whitened. Awesome record snow likely for Oklahoma City on Monday. Fun day when you wake up. Coco meteorologist Jonathan Condor, who just got a new teeth whitening, says record snow is likely Monday for Oklahoma City but somehow still believes in global warming and he has his blue tie really tight in a perfect knot. Yeah, that's amazing. Record snow in the form of global warming coming Monday noon to Ardmore and other areas in Oklahoma City. Yeah, we know about Oklahoma City. Another cold blast this week, but some relief from the chilly conditions could be ahead. Yeah, they may be. <laughs> uh, but let's just stick with the facts. Another cold blast this week. Heads up. A big dip in the jet stream known as the polar vortex and the grand solar minimum pattern. The meridional flow when it comes to will weather, be forcing cold temperatures south. Is they are so adaptable. A little bit of snow on the ground, no problem. Cold outside, hey, I'm just going to have fun. Well, a lot of us are going to have to try to get that spirit in the days to come because we've got more cold air that's going to be digging down across the country. Are you watching we've got this forecast, dip you in our jet stream And that cold air is digging well down into Texas. With that, those temperatures are running 20 to 30 degrees, even 35 degrees below average. That's down that's into in Mexico, so yo. It's going to be a bit uncomfortable. Check, Check out Dallas on Thursday, 42. In your highs, Monday Memphis, and Tuesday, 39 on Tuesday. 20s. And those numbers are more like what you'd experience in January. Then in Chicago, look at that. You've also got some 20s on Tuesday for your high temperature. Overnight lows, even colder. We're going to find many. Holy macaroni, 20 teens. for Oklahoma Don't City. Need to break out that 44 for New York. Yet. And as we look down the line, Pinch me. Like in the east, we've got With more a four. cold days to come. Now, chilly conditions have taken hold over the central and eastern U.S. It's true. 
35 degrees below normal, extending all the way down into Mexico. And we're going to show you snow totals that are extreme and record breaking. There are the current temps for November 11th right now. Look at the 14s, the 12s. Oh my gosh. I'm right here next to this 14. The recorded temperature at the ranch the last three days for the low was 7, 7, and 14 respectively. 14 this morning. I expect 14 again tomorrow morning. But I have crops growing in my rigid greenhouse using geothermal heat, so I'm not worried. Sunday morning was the coldest morning so far this season in parts of the east and the south. Al Gore is hiding in a snow cave. Temperatures dipped in the 20s and lower 30s Sunday morning for much of the east, including Philadelphia, Washington, where they've been going on and on about the global warming. Areas as far south as northern Mississippi, northern Alabama, northern Georgia, and parts of the Carolinas also saw record lows and freezing early Sunday. The first freeze in the season for Raleigh, Charlotte, North Carolina, waking millions up across the globe to what is unfolding before their very lives. <coughs> now, here's how much snow fell in Colorado today. The to snow totals as of 4.30 p.m. Sunday from the National Weather Service. The winter weather has returned. Snow stacked up quickly on Sunday with the most snow falling in the foothills north of Denver. The heaviest snowfall Sunday morning and then light showers lingered across the urban corridor through midnight. Ho, ho, ho! You know, it's interesting. The snow is really light and fluffy. Oh, my and God. It's not Thanks, Al. Wet, heavy snow. It's so light. So what's happening is you're getting this light, fluffy snow on top of a layer of ice. So the roads look fine. Oh, it's wet. Speedway, uh-uh. Lots of accidents, lots of spin-outs, an issue overnight tonight and for the drive tomorrow morning. So, yeah, let's go out, shall we? It is 25 degrees in Denver. Not a lot of wind, but the wind chill, the feels-like temperature, is 14. And many areas will see those wind chills below zero. Feels like 14 in Denver, currently. We'll greet travelers on I-70, in and out of the tunnel. Holy mackerelly. That is a January forecast. Let's call it November. Uh, the midnight hour rolls around. This and there's the snow totals. 3.1 in Conifer, 2.9 in Evergreen. The Nothing they haven't seen. Wind chill at 12, maybe. She's so happy about her global warming. Look how warm she is. As, of yet. As, as they throw fake you, flakes on that D bag. Fire her! Al! Did you hire her? What a shill. Hey, the climate guy. We love that guy. Sorry about it. We were about to share his stuff, but I forgot where it was. So we'll get to it on another video. There he is. Follow him. Holy macaroni. There he is. I say 2050, the climate guy prepping for the grand solar minimum. Let's save lives. I'll leave you links to this. G+. No one uses it. It's a total rag. But, dag, let's do it. We're about to get to the GFS models, and we're going to be clicking on some other things because we need definitely to make this move. Northumbria Academic says Little Ice Age could hit Earth by 2020. We're talking about Valentina Zarkova, and this is coming directly from Northumbria University in Newcastle. So I will leave you this blog because I know many of you are following this information as it unfolds, the possibility was discussed during the National Astronomy Meeting in Langdu, Wales by professional Valentina Zarkova of Northumbria alongside with an international group of scientists including Professor Simon Shepard, Bradford University, Dr. E. Popova of Moscow State, and Dr. Sergei Zarkov of the Hull University. Now, Professor Zarkova described the research as the first serious prediction of a reduction of solar activity that might affect human lives. Yes, it might. It might affect 30% of all humanity because it will lead to their deaths. Now, if the decrease in solar activity does take place, which we are now 95% certain, it could result in a period similar to the Monda Minimum back in 1645 to 1700 or even worse. 
Yes, there were only 50 sunspots on the surface of the sun instead of the usual 40 to 50,000, resulting in a very severe winters and cold summers, loss of crops, global unrest, and the like. And if you've been following, you'll want to read this piece in a pinch. It's a cinch. It's not that long. Winter is coming, warns the solar physicist. The alarm has tried to silence. And they were not able to silence her. And now the forecasts are following the forecasts. And at last, make the most of this summer because it could be your last. <laughs> no, it's not. This is total fear-mongering. It is not going to end summers. Ice ages don't even end summers. So anyone claiming that there will be no more summers is a fraud. Stop listening to them. The temperature generally dips in the grand minimas a half a degree to 1.5 degrees. You will not notice the change where you live, except there, in an area where it snows, there'll be more snow. In an area where it rains, there'll be more rain. In an area where it floods, there'll be more floods. It's going to be the same temperate climatic zone that you've always lived in. The reason everyone dies is because no one notices it happening. They're like, oh, this is just like the summer back when I was young. This is the winter when I was younger. Yeah. Until there's no more food on the shelves and you have to eat your pets. Those are the facts. Let's check out more of them. Coming from the GFS model, heavy snow. Say it ain't so. This is bringing us out just through Tuesday, November 20th. Nine days from now. Two feet of snow covering most of the eastern seaboard, north of North Carolina. Look at those totals. Insane. And the snow extends all the way down deep into Mexico. I don't, I can't imagine it. it's going to snow shortly in Cuba or Florida, especially with heavy snows falling in November at these latitudes. Translate this over to January. I'm going to say snows throughout the tropics. The first winter, it's going to be heavy snow in Cuba. Yeah, in Puerto Rico and other areas that may have never seen snow in their entire lives. You're going to watch it live while we, we report on it. Here are the current models. Let's just go through your Tuesday. Heavy snow, central New Mexico, north Texas, and through the southern Midwest. Arkansas, Missouri, Kansas, Oklahoma, all experiencing snow, up through Iowa, Ohio, no, I'm sorry, Indiana and Ohio, and then a little light snow in the Appalachians midweek. Then Thursday is when the heavy snows come to Snowshoe and Virginia. Central PA, Pennsylvania is going to get a dump. New York State looks like it's going to get hit heavy as we head into your Friday and Saturday. It's going to be an epic ski weekend for all parts of Colorado, New Mexico, and the entire East Coast are going to get buried in record snows. Say it ain't so. Yeah, it's so. Look at the totals in Mexico. Boom! Yeah! It's boom time, suckers. Is that Randy from... Is, who the fuck are these people? They know what's up. That's boom. So there's the GFS model. It keeps getting whiter and whiter. The snows up here in British Columbia are approaching three to four feet in many regions, in all the high peaks. Whew. We can't even make it up, but we, we can't even make this up. 6.2, North Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Svalbard rocking again at 4.4. More Mid-Atlantic Ridge motion out here in the Indian Ocean. Mid-Indian Ridge, 5.1 in Rodriguez. We have a 4.8 at the Mid-Indian Ridge. Lateral and a 4.9 lateral of Rodriguez is 5.2, 5.1. The ocean Plates are expanding. Now, what happens when the ocean plates are expanding, the mid-ocean ridges? It means our planet is getting larger. I believe the plate tectonic theory is correct as at the same time it is incorrect. 
The idea of a single continent of Pangaea is insane. The actual planet would be off kilter in density and will wobble out of its orbit. That You cannot put all the continents on one side and have an ocean that's 70% of the planet on the other. It won't work. The only way it would work is if there is no ocean and the planet shrinks and all the continents are basically the planet. So smaller Earth size, larger Earth size during these cosmic ray periods. The Earth either grows or shrinks depending on the cosmogenic state. And we're currently enlarging. And it allows the fissures, which are the plate boundaries, all to emanate lava and causes increased volcanism and increased seismicity worldwide. And I'm sticking with that. It's my final answer. If you don't like it, please unsubscribe. Here's more facts. Photo of the summit crater of Merapi from the 2nd June on left, 11th November on right. Yes, it is a fright because it is factually an increase in a lava dome. Here, look here at the rim. No lava dome. Here's the same rim. Massive lava dome. Now, what happens typically, if you can see the big void missing from the top, this volcano once had a top, which is now blown off. So this lava dome will continue to rise up until it blows off, as in previous times, probably knocking down some of these points and killing thousands of people like Merapi did about a decade ago. Merapi is on the uptick with dozens of other volcanoes worldwide, and we have to keep a close eye on them because they're all about to blow up in the next decade or so. Large majority of earthquakes and volcanoes will be on the uptick in the neck in the years and decades to come, which is what we're warning you to be prepared for. Popo volcanic ash has ceased and it was erupting earlier today. Fuego also erupting today. Krakatoa erupting today. Dukono, Mayon, Sange, Sabankaya. Whew, quite a list. Yes, come check it out. Such a list. We'll look at it. Let's check out Sabankaya puffing today. We just said it was puffing. There's the intermittent activity at Sabankaya. We'll do a flyby. No, actually, we'll just be stationary. But here it comes. Wait for it. Puff, puff, boom. Give me the boom. You saw him, Moby. Oh, there it was. Let's do it again. Oh! Ah! Take Chevron decades to make that much CO2, <laughs> but they're going to tax you. Oh, uh, do do do. <coughs> Are we having fun yet, kids? 22 minutes in. No end in sight. Would flooding in the desert help stop global warming? Would more of these insane articles that make absolutely no sense that anyone wrote them uh, make sense to continue coming out? Let's break it down. <laughs> Is this NBC? <sighs> now, let's break this article down and see how insane it is. Would flooding the deserts help stop global warming? Yeah, it would. Because it would cool the planet. It would green the deserts. It would create more capture for CO2. It would create more capture for the water cycle and it would create humidity in this region. It would cool the area. Now they claim the idea is risky, unproven, and even unlikely to work. So why are you writing this article? What the f It's boom time! Thanks Randy and other people of other ethnicities. Look at this. Black guy, the young, funny Asian guy, the fat guy. Everyone needs the fat guy with the funny hat. We, She could be Middle Eastern or a Muslim or something. And then this guy is like the Asia Mexican. You don't know. He could be coming from Central America or Polynesia. And this is the right wing white chick that voted for Trump. And that's a bump, but it's really a boom. Let's talk about Dr. Congo, Ebola outbreak worst in the country's history. Do you think that's bad news? Ho! <laughs> no, that's boom time. Congo, Ebola boom time. Let's read about it. Medical teams are vaccinating people to help stop the spread of the virus. Vaccinating? Holy 
They're vaccinating for Ebola. And it's the worst ever. Hey, I wonder why it's the worst outbreak ever as they inject Ebola into a bunch of people where there is Ebola. I need to smoke Ebola because this shit is insana in the membrana. Almost 200 people have died since August, officials say, with more than 300 confirmed probable cases, which means there's 600 unreported and 4,000 that we don't know about. Dr. Congo has suffered long years of instability in efforts to release the disease have been hampered. Efforts to release, oh, it says relieve. Yeah, they've been hampered by this injection of Ebola into people. They call it vaccine. Do you know what a vaccine is? It's the disease. So now they're injecting Ebola into millions of people in the Ebola region. No, what could go wrong? What could go wrong? Boom! Yeah, Ebola time. It could be Ebola time, kids. Florida recount finally wraps up. Al Gore declared president. Say it ain't snow. Like all news on the mainstream, this is fake news. Thank you, Babylon B, for making me see. Many people believe this shite. And they're going to send Al Gore an email tonight thanking him and congratulating him for his presidency. He looks confused. Let's check out the number one Grand Solar Minimum Crazy Canuck. You schmuck. No, he's not a schmuck. It's Brent Stumpf. This is a friend of the channel. And he's got a new uh, YouTube channel, which apparently isn't parsed right now. So, <laughs> and he's got great music. So we'll let it play, play and I will describe to you no, we won't let it play. What he talks about in his first video. His first video, Brent Stump, he's up in Canada, up in Alberta. He's a Canuck. A Canuck. What the... F whatever you call it. Up Chuck. Buck Luck. Hoser Man. He's a good friend of the channel. He's been supporting us from the rep. He's been in constant contact with Diamond at the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Christian over at Ice Age Farmer, and others in the community because he's a real dude and he really has greenhouses. He's really prepping and he really sees the changes. <coughs> you know why? Because he really lives there. He's living it. Now he's talking about bricks. And you can all suck my dicks because bricks are the shit. <coughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome, Welcome to my, my channel. channel. Welcome, Welcome to my, to my debut, debut video. video. This is the Crazy <laughs> Canuck coming at you from Saskatchewan, Canada. Excuse me. This channel is going to be dedicated to preparedness and growing your own food and all kinds of different ideas. Uh, we're heading into some very turbulent times with weather. Holy shit, sounds like Brent's been watching some good shows. Food shortages. And this is my way to contribute. First of all, we're going to get going here with a weather report. No, we're not. We're going to shut you down, Locally, Brent, because anyone can get the weather raining. on Google. But what he does talk about in this video, and it's awesome, come subscribe. Let's get this to 1,000. It's at 35. This guy is one of the top budding YouTubers in Canada, and he's going to be showing us live what's happening there as the Grand Solar Minimum unfolds. Not only that, he is an old farmer that has learned from his father and others. He knows all of the historical farming cycles, and what this guy knows about is bricks. And we're not talking about bricks that you smash the faces of people with. We're talking about bricks with an X. B-R-I-X. And we're going to come over here to the number one source of information, Wikipedia, <laughs> and talk about bricks. Bricks is the sugar content of an aqueous solution. One degree bricks is one gram of sucrose in 100 grams of solution, and it represents the strength of solution as percentage by mass. If the solution contains dissolved solids, such as sugars... Then, by the BX only approximate, the dissolved solid contents, the bricks is traditionally used in a wine, sugar, carbonated beverage, fruit juice, maple syrup, and honey industries. But Brett uses it in the grain industry and food because what Brett claims and many others is that high bricks is long-term storage. So you want high bricks in your 
potatoes and your turnips, as well as your grains, because you're going to be able to store them for longer without doing anything. Come listen to Brent Stumpf. Yeah, he's got to change the name of that. To the Crazy Canuck. And listen to his first talk on bricks and give him a thumbs up. It's worth the watch. Four minutes and 26 seconds could change your life. Certainly get you more familiar with bricks. And then you can all suck my dicks. Let's talk about some more facts before we end up the video. I think a lot of you are struggling with the truth and we need to bring you the truth because this channel is about the truth. LeakCon 2019, do it. Evolution is a term to find only one organism and that's the self. The self is the universe. The self is the alpha and omega, God and infinity. And that's the only thing that evolves, because we are all part of the self. Nothing goes through an evolutionary process alone, or without direct benefit to the whole. So when you begin to think that there's this controlling elite, this controlling hand behind the curtains, leading the planet to destruction, when you think the end is near, the apocalypse, Armageddon, and when you think we as a species are doomed, it is not they, it is you that brought this about. And for a very good reason. You are evolving. Thank you, Cosmic Stop Rays. Stop everybody and everything else. Quit panicking about global tyranny and natural disaster and pay attention. Because the world is telling you something. It's telling you exactly what is wrong with you and how to fix it. Are you listening? If you are, then you don't need to watch this video. But if you're still confused, I have Chimatica in the playlist and I'll link it below. It's several hours of breathtaking information that will open your eyes like never before. I'll give you a little taste of creation and you decide for yourself if it's worth watching. The Earth is believed to have formed 4.6 billion years ago. Within the first 150 million years, it began cooling and releasing gases from the lithosphere, which created the earliest forms of the Earth's atmosphere. Prior to the creation of this atmosphere, the sun's ultraviolet radiation made for uninhabitable conditions. But as the Earth cooled further, water condensed in the atmosphere, and oxygen accumulated making way for organic compounds. This spawns single-celled organisms, and then plant life. And down through time, the evolutionary chain continued. And then we arrive at a species that does not seem to fit as well as the rest. <laughs> Homo sapiens gestation period of nine months mimics the 3.8 billion year evolution of all life on Earth. The human embryo repeats the evolution of all species. When the sperm and egg unite, this new creation is a single-celled organism. Within hours, this single cell divides and multiplies more rapidly than any other species. Four weeks later, the embryo begins to develop gills mimicking aquatic life. A few weeks later, it develops lungs and a tail with reptilian appearance. From there, a mammal is recognizable. If you're picking up what we're putting down and this video interests you, there'll be links to low, below for the entire video that we have in our library. Thank you, Chimatica, for dishing out the truth for those people that are interested in sampling the red pill. Startup Rocket Lab puts six small satellites into orbit. It's boom time! Holy macaroni! This means that you and I can put up a satellite into orbit and prove the Earth is not flat. It also means that Rex Bear and I might be able to ing Indiegogo a small satellite to allow us to sh launch towards the moon and get actual footage of the moon with our own private satellite with your help. It's something that we're dreaming of and the powers that be would hate us for, but there are ways to do it. And we're going to dream it. Rocket Lab's second ever mission, nickname, It's Business Time, launched successfully from a New Zealand launch pad. This little tiny rocket is like a backyard model rocket. It's only 60 feet high. Yeah. 
Rocket Lab's Electron rocket launched six small satellites or small sats into low Earth orbit Sunday from New Zealand. It's the second time the company's rocket, which is less than 60 feet tall, has done that. And for just a few tens of thousands of dollars, you can put your satellite in there, which will chuck it into space. Just like Mace, in your face. Wow. Times are changing. Hopefully we can get this done before the shit hits the fan. It's our dream. Hey, have you heard of another dream? Visionary Laird Scranton is coming to LeakCon. No, it's true. Pinch me. I just woke up. It's not a dream. It's really happening. Laird Scranton, one of my heroes in the truth movement, LeakCon 2019. He has some of the best books in the truth movement. You don't know about him because he is he doesn't go out in the public. He's a very quiet guy. He keeps to himself. Self, but I personally met him at Electric Universe and I think he watches the channel because as soon as I messaged him, he was very interested in our conference and we're going to have him there signing all of his books in the exhibit hall. He's going to give two talks. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait. Save up. If you can't afford to get to Denver and meet us all and hang out with the crew, you can feel like you're there. Get the live stream. It's going to be 20 bucks all weekend. We want thousands of people watching this because you're going to be able to then download it yourselves and share this on your own YouTube to get the word out. It's boom time, kids. I hope you're prepared and not scared. That's why I have this totally hilarious group of six idiots on the screen. I want to thank all of our new subscribers, all the people that put up with my foul language, and all the people that share these videos. Last month, we had a record month. In the next few days, we're going to break 40,000 subscribers, and we can't thank you enough. From the bottom of my heart, I have the attitude of gratitude. I'm choked up. It's because of you guys that I've been able to continue to do this every day for a year and a half, and I'm going to continue to do it for your benefit and the benefit of all humanity. And it's because of you subscribers. Last month, we shared a record 9,875 of these videos. And I share it five times a day. So 1,500 are my shares. But the rest is you guys. And I can't thank you enough. By sharing this videos, you're getting the information to people who are too scared to subscribe. Still over 53% of our viewers are not subscribers. They're frauds. So if you're listening now and you're scared what people will think because you are investigating the truth, that's on you. We love each and every one of you. The haters, the skaters, the masturbators, the subscribers, the mothers, the sisters, the daughters, the fighters, the losers, the closet drunks, the alcoholics, the felons, the armpit smellings. We love melons. And that's a boom. Be safe, everyone. Eat a cantaloupe as long as it's organic. I love spam. <laughs>